Now we're rolling. Damage Plan MMA Podcast. I'm Jason, as always. My co-host, the voice of MMA in Utah, Mr. Zach Partridge. What up, dog? Hey, nice shirt. I got the white Damage Plan Athletic shirt. You got the podcast shirt on. Podcast. That's yeah. because I'm a podcaster before I'm an athlete. So uh, we have another fighter spotlight. Welcoming Mr. Elias Landau to the podcast. Elias, welcome. Howdy. So I just got to know, how many one-hit guys are you going to fight? <laughs> All of us. Are you just going to fight everybody? Just line them all up. Anyone that, that comes in front of me, I'll fight. <laughs> I, so you you fought – we talked about it before you got on. So you fought Hayden, you fought Zach, and now you're fighting Mason yep. on September 18th, right? Yep. Awesome. At awesome. three different weight classes. At the whole, and yeah, three different all, weight classes. All the birds, different weight classes. I fought Hayden at, at 185. I fought yep. you at 195. Yep. And now I'm fighting Mason at heavyweight. Yep. <laughs> Elias, what's up, man? What's going on with that? It's just, well, one hit keeps putting out a lot of fighters, so I guess I end up going against them. <laughs> well, well, we have options, but I think yeah. it was more regarding to like what, why the change in weight classes. And <laughs> oh, things. is it the co- is it the COVID? Did the COVID get the vid get you? Uh, a combination COVID. I definitely put on some weight during that, and also uh, while my wife was pregnant, and then when the baby was born, I just. I gained some sympathy weight. <laughs> hey, it, it happens. Man. It happens. Congratulations uh, on the baby. Yeah. Congratulations but, on no, the baby. Not all of it's fat, a good amount of it's muscle, but it's just like, it basically was like, I'm not cutting that kind of weight to get down to light heavyweight. And it's, it's just not worth it. I don't find that the advantage of being a little heavier in the lower weight class is worth the drain from the big weight cut. You know, I'm walking around at 235. I'd have to cut 30 pounds to get down to light heavy. It's not worth it to me. Well, when we fought, how much did you how much did you have to cut? Uh, so I got down to one ninety five. I think I cut down from about two oh five. Okay, so it's not uh, horrible. Oh, but no, yeah, no, but I cut down from two ten, about okay. two ten. But again, you're not horrible, but like definitely not comfortable. Right, and I definitely was. A, I went in a bit drained, you know. But that's every way cut. I always you're never going to be a hundred percent after any decent weight cut. And I'm just now kind of like, let me try this without doing a weight cut. I've had one fight ever before where there was no weight cut because I took it on like a couple of days notice. So they were like, it's just going to be at your walk around weight. Oh, yeah. I remember that. Yeah. Yeah. That was against uh Lujan. And yeah. I, and I felt really good, even though I didn't have a full camp for that. I had like full energy going into that fight. I was able to keep a he- uh, a good pace for yeah. the whole thing. I remember watching that fight and remember thinking how active, how much more active you were, and you looked in that fight and heavy leg kicks. Right, that was that fight. You threw a lot of leg <laughs> kicks. Oh yeah, I definitely. Well, I think a lot of fighters underestimate how good leg kicks are. You break someone's yeah. legs down, they're not fighting anymore. <laughs> yeah, we're seeing it a lot too we're now. We're seeing it a lot currently. It, it it's something, and it's something that's been going a lot. Uh, I think more and more knowledge is, is starting to come out that rather than being big for the weight class, it's you're going to perform better to just feel better going into the fight. A hundred percent. Yeah. Cause I, man, I, 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 I keep pointing out to Robert Whitaker. He was a pretty average welterweight. And then all of a sudden he's like, forget these large weight cuts. I'm just going to hang out at middleweight now. And then Smart. champ, right. He became champ. I mean, style bender, he's the same way. He does walks around. He cut, yeah. He walks around low 190s. Yeah. And you see how dominant he is. Because- I think, yeah, I think people are, um, well, they're getting, they're getting more educated on the nutrition and the weight cutting. You're starting to see more people get involved with that. And it's not the, hey, let's starve yourself the week of fight camp to, to make weight or the, the, you know, the week of the fight to make it. We're, we, you're starting months prior to slowly get get you to that point well i mean i was the perfect example right this fight i just i woke up on weight i didn't have to do any sauna time no water weight cut at 170 and people are like oh man that's great like that it they had an easy weight cut well like the the water weight cut that it was non-existent because i did things for three months right like i did i did my weight cut over three months making sure i'm losing two to three pounds a week basically so anyways, so what, what you've had a little bit of a layoff. We had COVID welcome to the fatherhood. Welcome to the tribe of fatherhood. Um, <laughs> Thank you. Did, did, was this something you reached out to, 
to Steel Fist and said, hey, I'm ready for a fight? Or did they reach out to you for this fight? I reached out to them. I basically was like, you know what? I'm now training again regularly. I'm itching to get back in there. I knew I had to. I couldn't do the fight too close to right after the baby was born. Uh, just out of practicality, could not train too regularly during that time. But also, I didn't want to come into the fight sleep deprived. I get that. One hundred percent. Where are you? Tra- are you training at the pit still? Yep, over at the pit now. Nice. I've been there for a couple years now. For a few years now. Because since uh, was it Temple that closed down? Did you go there after Temple? No, I never uh, trained at Temple. I went mm-hmm. from you just going UTC, uh, UTC, UTC okay. and then I switched over to the pit. Okay, okay. You know what? It, it's kind of funny. You, this we're kind of coming full circle from what was it two years ago? You and Zach fought two and a half years ago, and I actually was in the weigh-in picture because you weren't there yet to weigh in, and Zach had to go to a. I think it was a basketball game, wasn't it? College basketball, Zach. Yeah, P- March sure Madness. I had March, March Madness, Madness tickets. <laughs> so I was there. I just happened to be there, and you hadn't ri- arrived yet, Elias. So yeah. we talked to Kevin. We're like, I'll do the face-off. So well, the, the infamous face-off picture. I was having a trouble with that weight cut. Part of the reason why I'm not doing big weight cuts anymore is I was sitting in the tub, sweating out that oh. last bit, and then I and got it. It came down to the wire for me. I did Bro, make weight. No we should have. We should 100% have fought at 205 for that because that was my biggest weight cut that I ever did. I cut, I cut 12 pounds. I cut 12 pounds that morning. You know what? It, it probably would have looked like a better fight too. I mean, it was still a great fight. <laughs> I'm happy with it. I'm happy with it as well, but it would have been an even better fight if neither one of us had been drained from a weight cut. Yeah. yeah. No, because so I the the dumbest part about that whole thing is is I had March Madness tickets. And if anybody's familiar with March Madness, is they have four games at Vivid throughout the day. So I got up at like 5 a.m. Me and Kyle Frazier went to Vasa, went and cut all my weight, cut my 12 pounds, saw 195 on the scale by like 9 30, hopped, went, went home, showered, put clothes on, got two packs of gum. Cause I knew my mouth was going to be dry. And then I just went and sat at Vivint for the entire day and watched college basketball miserable. <laughs> so dumb. Oh man. <laughs> Crazy. So Elias, what do you know about Mason? I'm sure you've seen him fight. We're all, we're, you guys are all local guys, but what, what do you know about Mason? What are you expecting from Mason out of this, this next fight? I, you know, I'm trying, when I fight, I try not to necessarily have too like specific of a picture of my opponent just because Opponents change big time, especially yeah. he hasn't fought also in a couple of years because of COVID. Yeah. Uh, so I don't know what has changed. I fully expect him to have hard hits. You know, I know he can put power behind his punches. Uh, I think that I'm probably the stronger grappler uh, compared to him. But, you know, I'm going to – I don't really go in with a game plan of saying, oh, this is this guy's – talent this is his weakness i'm just gonna go in they start standing i'll hit if i need to i'll take it to the ground i feel comfortable in whether it's standing or on the ground where do you think that you've grown the most since you're since we last saw you in the cage probably my striking yeah uh my grappling has of course still improved uh, a bit uh, over time but my striking i've really tightened it up a lot i've worked on certain weaknesses uh you know, one fight I got, I've gotten caught with with letting my hand drop a bit, <laughs> yeah, uh, it, that, which was not a fun experience. So I've learned that the hard way, and I've really worked on my head movement. But yeah, overall, my stand up has gotten a lot better. I think since the last time I've been in the cage. Well, and then you're training at, at the pit and with the strikers that they have there, like Marco Sanchez and some of the boxer heavy people too. I'm sure that that helps. Oh, it helps immensely, and then it also helps. Uh, we have a lot of very good wrestlers over there. So that's helped out with my takedowns and my takedown defense. Uh, that was something that I did, wasn't really getting uh, from before. Usually my jujitsu training was pretty much once it got to the ground, it, there wasn't a heavy emphasis on getting it to the ground. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So that's helped out a lot now as well. Okay. Nice. I, I, I'm excited for this fight. It was, I was really intrigued, obviously, a former opponent versus a teammate. It'd be really interesting to see kind of the stylistic difference where Mason, you know, he, he was he was a wrestler in high school. So, I mean, he 
you know, he's shown some some pretty decent wrestling ability in in his couple fights, and and uh, and and I roll with him regularly. It's I think this is going to be a really fun matchup. And two guys that here, here's here's the biggest thing. I used to always say uh, ring rust wasn't real. I think it was all mental and it was all in your head. But I'll tell you what: after taking 17 months and stepping into a cage, <laughs> it, it was a little. I mean. Not that it's an excuse, but I, I think it played a little bit of a factor in my last fight. Please try and take me down. Mason. Oh, boy, there we go. <laughs> yeah. We're gonna are we gonna get a Dunkle Steve Sharp podcast? Maybe we should have Mason come on too. <laughs> Not a chance. Elias is too nice. Yeah, Elias is too Mace nice. Is, Mason's kind of a jerk, but Elias is too nice of a person. Uh, yeah, it's it'd be hard to recreate that one. It'd be real hard. <laughs> Do you believe in ring rust, Elias? I think like what you said, it's a lot of mental. Yeah. Uh, You know, some people we've seen, you know, you've seen it in uh, the UFC. There's guys that come in after months or years of layoff and they look like they've never left the cage. GSP is a good example. And you have some people who come in and you see it, 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 they are feeling out of their element. Uh, So I think at the end of the day, it comes down to, the individual fighter. I don't think I'm going to really have a problem with it. Uh, I've been training. I train hard. Uh, so, and Mason's in the same boat. We're all, I think every fighter's in the same boat right now. We've all gotten this, yeah. gotten this massive layoff that none of us wanted. Uh, for some of us, it's worse than others. Uh, you know, especially any fighter who was like really like just skyrocketing and get, and was like at that point where they were going to like probably jump to the next level to a higher level promotion. It sucks. Like, yeah, but absolutely. no, I'm not feeling like ring rust is going to be an issue in this fight. Good. Good. I, Heck I, yeah. I hope that's the case. Cause that's uh, going to every fight, regardless of whatever, you just hope you get the, the best out of the both guys and, and you get a decisive finish. So you really know who won or lost. Right. And so I, that's, that's that when I, especially since, you know, like in a case with you and Mason, like, that's what I hope. Like if you bo- both can fight it to your best, feel it your best, which is, it sounds like you're ready to a heavyweight. And that's where you think that you'll perform at your best. I, I think that that's going to be, that sets up for, uh the most entertaining fight possible. So Elias, what um, big picture, obviously not looking past Mason on September, uh, September 18th, big picture. What's, what's going forward after this fight? Are you going to try to, are you going to go pro? Is this just something you're going to keep? Are you going to keep trying to be more active? What What's, what's in the future for Mr. Elias? So I think I am going to eventually go pro because at this point, this will be my 12th Annie fight. Uh, yeah. Which is, I mean, how many f- amateur fights? Enough is enough at one point. So let me see how the fight goes. I definitely want to turn pro at one point. Yeah. Uh, and how the fight goes is going to tell me a lot. Also, it's going to tell me, am I is heavyweight a good weight division for me? Yeah. That's actually what I was about to say. You do have 12 amateur fights, but you're ranging in, in weight classes that um, – I, I actually think if you're going to be a heavyweight and you think that that's your home, you're not starting from zero, but you almost want to get a, a solid, you know, what, three or four, maybe even five fights at that weight class. To be, And here's the other thing, Elias, props to you, because those heavyweights are huge. <laughs> some of those guys are ginormous, bro. If you want to go pro and, big, and, heavyweights are, and heavyweights your class, it's like there's some big, those are some big boys up there. There are some big guys in there. <laughs> I mean, so, realistic, realistically, Mason would be the first one to tell you he should probably be fighting at 205, lose some weight and be fighting at 205. But like, you know, our boy Fiji that just commented, he's an amateur heavyweight. It's like he's a legit heavyweight and he, he's ginormous. <laughs> so he's big, big it's, some, it's that's something to factor in, definitely. But, you know, I mean, looking at the higher levels, you get a lot of the really top level heavyweights aren't walking at the top of the weight division. Yeah. A lot of them are in that 235, 240 range. It's true. Yeah. Very true. Most, most guys that are like walking around at that, where they're having, having to cut down to 265, they don't move fast enough. Uh, unless your name's Brock Lesnar or Francis. And, and or God. Francis. Yeah, they are, they are the exceptions. They're the anomalies, right? <laughs> yeah. They are anomalies. They are the exceptions. Uh, 
very few people can get to that size and then still move like they can. <laughs> That's true. Right. So Elias, do you have a do you want to give us a prediction for the fight? I think my prediction is I'm gonna win. <laughs> All right. All right. Hey, we'll um, take it. Hey, it's it's your how? show, man. <laughs> yeah. How? Do, you, do you have a prediction on how? That's I, what we like to hear. And and if you if you if you don't want to answer, it's totally fine. We got a follow up question for you that I think you'll be able to answer. I think it's gonna. I don't see this being a thirty second fight. I don't envision it being a quick knockout or something or a very quick submission right off the bat. I figure it's gonna be a, a round of me breaking him down and draining him. Uh, maybe finish him in the first round, whether it's a uh, stoppage due to strikes or a submission, or more. Or go into the second round. I don't really envision this going all the way to the third round, but if it does, I've done all three rounds before. Yeah, uh, fine, just fine. Before uh, that was, although that was the least satisfying win I've ever had, was winning by decision. Well, it's better than losing by decision. I can tell you that. <laughs> that that is true. I will agree on that one. Um, I just I'd rather go ahead and finish. Then there's no discussion about who won and who lost. For sure. Yeah. For sure. So, all right. Do you watch? Do you watch WWE, WWF? You did you watch that growing up? No, I actually never watched it growing up. My 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 next follow up question was going to be: If you were a wrestler, what would be your finishing? What would be your finishing move in the cage? <laughs> like, are you a Ric Flair figure four leg lock, <laughs> Hulk Hogan leg drop? I, I I could see you jumping through the flying elbow off the top rope. Elias would be like the claw, like George the Animal Steel, like the claw. <laughs> Yeah, that's a good one. That's that's Elias right there. The Sasquatch, baby. <laughs> Elias, do you have any sponsors you want to give a shout out to before we let you go? Uh I, I don't have any sponsors at the moment. Uh maybe I will get some in the in the near future, just ha focusing on the fit big fight. That's all. Hey, no. I have one more question for you. You brought your nephew to the last steel fist fights. Did he have a good time? Oh, he had a great time. Good. Awesome. <laughs> I think we turned him into an MMA fan. Awesome. Heck yeah. That's awesome. the goal, man. Good for you. <laughs> I think that's awesome that you took him. All right. All right, Elias. We'll let you get out of here, man. September 18th. If you guys don't have tickets, reach out to Elias. Get your tickets. I'm assuming you probably haven't even got tickets yet, have you? Uh, I got them uh, last week, actually. Oh, okay. Sweet. So cool. hit Elias up. That place is going to be – It'll. it's going to be sold out. Oh, I, yeah. That, this one's probably, probably even sold out. Probably even quicker than the last one with – yeah pretty pretty it's a it's a really good card so i'm excited well thank you for having me on here thanks Roger for coming that, on man. Elias. We'll, Appreciate we'll, it. we'll see you september 18th brother <laughs> and we out